Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all this morning. I'd like to welcome you to Mama Grace Ministry. My name is Pastor Lavin Nemo Patrick. It's good to be worshiping outside this morning. Today is the day of Pentecost. And as always, we start our morning by reminding each other that no matter who you are and no matter where you are in your life's journey, all of you are welcome to this space. And in our usual way, we go around saying jumbo to each other to recognize God's presence in each other. So I want you to go around and say good morning to each other and say, Jumbo, I see you this morning. How about we do that this morning? Morning. We at least two people this morning. this morning on our announcements just a reminder that our bible study will still be ongoing every tuesdays online and uh, we have a zoom link for that we have it on zoom and if this is something you're interested in let us know and we can provide you with that zoom link we continue to ask you to pray for larry edwards family and the Gidis family and uh, our soap meetings are going to uh, are still ongoing every last sunday of the month and so we encourage everybody to join us. Um, on Saturday, uh, there will be a, a yard sale around 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So if this is something you're interested in, we encourage you to join. And at this moment, I would like to call on our praise team to come forward and lead us in worship. We feel called to join and stand as we worship God together this morning. Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you, praise and worship team, for leading us in such a beautiful music this morning. God is a wonderful and merciful Savior, and indeed, He's the one that our hearts always wonder for. It's now time for our call to worship this morning. I invite you to join me together for our call to worship. When the world divides us, when the world calls us often, when the world leads us astray, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place. Amen. It's now time for opening hymn this morning. It's from United Methodist, page 122. You can turn to the hymnals, God of the Sparrow. Please join me as we sing together with you. Our scripture reading is Acts 2, chapter 1 and 21. When the day of Pentecost had came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heavens there came a sound like the rushing of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a choir appeared among them, 
and the tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now, where, now there were devout Jews from every nation under the heavens living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because the, each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And now is it that we hear them, each of us, in our own language? Parthians, Medes, the Canaanites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judah, and Pentecostus, and Pontus, and Asia, Baradek, and Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Syria, the visitors from Rome, both Jew and Muslims, Greeks and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But the others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judah, and all who and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suspect, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what is spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declared that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in these days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portent in the heavens, heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and the smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon shall to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Mr. Steve, for such a beautiful reading. Isn't it wonderful that we get to have a service outside in nature it's beautiful right uh, now it's time for our children's uh, message this morning and during children's message we always try to guess this time around i'm not sure if we'll be able to guess what what's inside my box but essentially um let me see if you can guess what's inside my box sorry what you say paper paper okay great <laughs> who else wants to guess what's inside my box sorry Okay, that's a good guess. That's a great guess. That's a great guess. Um, I want to do something a little bit different today. I want to speak in my tongue. And in my tongue, to say good morning to somebody, it means Alia Bom. And Alia Bom just means good morning. And that is just one of my native tongue. And in Alpana is another tongue that I speak, which is good morning as well. But that is in Hausa. The first that I spoke to you. It's in Dansho, which is my mother tongue. So I have different languages that I speak from. And the reason why I'm bringing that up today is today is Pentecost. And I wanted Miss uh, Susie to help me light up something uh, here. Here with me is So on Pentecost, it's a story about Jesus' friends. And so it was Passover, people came all over the world to celebrate this Jewish tradition. And Jesus' disciples were gathered in a room, in a space, all together by themselves, very scared about what is going to happen to them when Jesus had passed. And so they were gathered, and all of a sudden, they heard a loud uh, sound of wind. And that wind came descending, and there was chaos going on in the vicinity of the rooms that they were in. And something interesting happened. What did you say? 
Yes, and there was fire in their head. And you see, I have a candle really to denote that fire. So when the wind came blowing and there was a lot of chaos, came this fire. And all of a sudden, all of the disciples of Jesus began to speak in different tongues. How many people speak more than one language here this morning? Speak more than one language? How many people speak more than one language this morning? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, he speaks more than a, uh, one language. Anybody else speaks more than a language here? More than one language? <laughs> awesome, awesome. So the Pentecost, essentially, this this wind, uh, uh, this chaos and the wind comes blowing, and they begin to speak in different languages. And everybody was confused. And what essentially happened was people thought this disciples of Jesus Christ were drunk, but they were not drunk. Essentially, they began to speak in different tongues what they were doing essentially was that they had the spirit feel the spirit had filled them when the spirit filled them they couldn't hold their joy they couldn't hold uh, their feeling and they began to speak the tongues. and essentially the bible said they go on to spread the love of christ and the message of christ and so at the beginning of this pentecost was the birthday of all churches and essentially here i also have a card maybe can you open this i have a card here which is a birthday card help me open it So Pentecost essentially marks the beginning of the birthday of church, and it has become a tradition in which we mark. Can you show everybody the card? <laughs> yes, it's black. I didn't write it. It's a birthday card for the church. But essentially, what Pentecost is is marks the beginning in which we had we started having churches. It marked the beginning where people started to gather to talk about the Word of God in spaces. And essentially, what the disciples did after that was. They were gathered in a room, and when the Spirit descended, they moved out and began to spread the Word of God. And we did that today. We moved out of our space, and here we are outside. And if anything, what they did was, not only were they spreading the Word of God, but they began to spread the love of God all over the world. And they began to spread the love of God all over to the people around them. So for children today, and for those of us who are here, when you think about the Pentecost, the disciples had an experience with the Holy Spirit. And what they did was, they went out and began to spread the word of God and the love of God, regardless of the language that they could speak. So, in your lives, what you can do is, you can essentially spread the love of Christ, regardless of what language. You can do it through your acts of kindness, you can do it through sign language, you can do it through your speech. God is saying to us, let us go out there and spread that love because we are spirit-filled people. We are people that speak different languages and our language of love can differ just like the individuals on Pentecost who spoke different languages. And so I encourage you as you go out this week, think about ways in which you can embody that spirit-filled Pentecost where you can spread the love of God in different languages. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are grateful for your love and we are grateful for Pentecost and we're grateful for our children. We thank you that even as we go out to the world, that you help us to embody the love of Christ, that spirit-filled love that the disciples have spread. Continue to bless our children and remind them to spread your love all over the world. Continue to bless our parents. Continue to bless our church from the mighty and marvelous name we ask and pray. Amen. Please join me as we sing Jesus Loves Me. Spirit, as we look at your word, 
as we think about the gift of your presence to us today. Bless us, each and every one of us. From your mighty and marvelous name we ask and pray. Amen. The title of my message this morning is The Spirit Lives Among Us. The Spirit Lives Among Us. When Jesus ascends, he lives as the Spirit. The Parakletos in Greek. And that means the Spirit of Truth. And that word gets variously paraphrased as advocate, counselor, comforter, helper, mediator who lives on among us and within us forever. Pentecost is also the day we honor the beginning of the church. And the church is after all the collection of disciples. And that can also be translated as students. And these are students of Jesus who continues his work in the world after his death. And they are bound by the spirit of truth. And so just like the disciples or students of Jesus before us, we too are bound together by this spirit. The spirit speaks differently through each of us. In each of our faith stories, each of the traditions of our churches. And so I ask the question, what is this Holy Spirit for you? You know, we spend a lot of time with the other aspect of the Trinity, that is with the Creator, with Jesus, through our, our church calendar. And one of my professors at Drew Theological School by the name Catherine Keller, who is an eco-feminist, processed theologian, writes about the earth, gender, and God. She talks about the spirit as the breath of God that blows through us, a creating force that means chaos, not just in the past, but in all the beginning places in our lives. For Keller, she describes the spirit as mutuality. The Holy Spirit is the force that immerses us all in our shared future. The Spirit lures us. The Spirit connects us. It draws us into community. And so mutuality becomes another name for the Holy Spirit. The story of the day of Pentecost is a familiar story in the Bible. Here this great global gathering, there were crowds from all over places. There were people from all nations, and all were gathered under heaven. And so with all those people and with all those noise came that violent wind and those tongues of fire lashing around to land on the apostles. And we can essentially assume that all of this took place outdoors or must have been in some big public square. But no, on the Pentecost, when the Pentecost happened, they were all inside. They were all in one place. And there was a sound that rushed like a wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. And in that house, somehow, a lot of the time, the details tend to escape all of us. All the drama took place within the house. And evidently, with all the wind and the noise and the chaos, the disciples decide to move outdoors to begin their polygod proclamation. They were speaking in tongues, but we must remember that it started indoors. And a crucial thing to note is that the initial movement of the Pentecost, the apostles moved from the inside the building out into the world. And thus that completes the transformation from Good Friday to the dawn of the church. And so after crucifixion, the disciples were terrified. They were terrorized. They were demoralized and paralyzed. They huddled behind closed doors. Then the risen Christ comes, and that Christ breathes spirit onto them and into them. And that risen Christ is with them for 40 days. 
And so he decides to ascend into heaven and he is gone again. And so they sit around for 10 days and it's called the ascension tide. And in between that time, they were holding on to their fears. They were all behind closed doors and sleeping in fear and perhaps discouraged and paralyzed. But now comes this violent wind and the tongue of fire and then this multi-language miracle. The apostles are blown out into the world with a phenomenal wind of that Holy Spirit. And what happens to them is that they are full of confidence, faith, and they have this proclamational proficiency. They were huddled and anxious behind closed doors, sheltering in. But on that Pentecost day, they found themselves outside. They were catapulted from inside to the outside. The Holy Spirit turns them from people who were dispirited to people who were spirited. The Holy Spirit turns them to people who had no hope and gives them hope. And they were people who felt like they were paralyzed, but now they could use the Holy Spirit to have that confidence and courage and be able to start that word of proclamation. And of course, we've got it because we are like the disciples of Jesus. From today's epistles, we hear these familiar words. There are various gifts, but the same Holy Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The Bible says each and every one of us have been given that gift. We all have a variety of gifts, but that gift should be used for common good. And the Holy Spirit is with us every step of the way. And that Holy Spirit comes blowing again and again that on its wind we may be empowered anew on this day. That all of us can be recipients and agents of God's healing in our world. I'd like to talk to you about a documentary which is titled When God Left the Building. The film profiled two churches in decline. And one of them was heading towards a disastrous end as its members fought with one another blaming their pastors as they endured crisis of faith. The other church too was wrestling with its future and not quite sure what to think about one of its faithful members who had a crazy idea like opening an outreach ministry in a bar. So the theme of the documentary was how a church might take its life and ministry beyond its walls. How it might be willing or how it might be able to embrace change and how to turn the church from a noun denoting a destination into more like a verb, an action, a way of being, not just within its building but outside of its walls. We all have experienced the COVID-19 pandemic. Somehow people had to embrace change whether we wanted it or not. It redefined how church both is and is not a destination. It invited us into a new way of worshiping, new ways of being together, and even more positive, perhaps new ways to serve the world around us. And so when crises like this happen, they deprive us in many ways. And perhaps it also unbounds us, unchains us in a lot of ways. And so the Pentecost wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. And when they left the building, at the sound of the Pentecost wind, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each heard them speaking to them. It turns out that meeting people where they are instead of just expecting that they will show up where we are is not a bad idea as we see from the story of the Pentecost. And so I wonder what we are learning from the changes that are happening all around us. I wonder how we have changed over the course of our time. I wonder what former things we will cherish more than ever. 
And I wonder what former things we will discover that don't really matter so much to us. I also wonder what new things we would not want to relinquish for all the world. All of us friends are eager for a stronger community where we can receive nourishment and feel loved. And if you think about one more theme of that documentary, When God Left the Building, alongside those two declining congregations, there was another institution profiled by the film, the Eastman Kodak Community. And even more dramatically than the two churches, the Kodak Community collapsed. They were dominant and ubiquitous. They were a dominant and ubiquitous community. And all of a sudden, they collapsed to become a marginal and forgotten community. And in the documentary, the editors suggested why the Kodak community actually fell. The Kodak community forgot what business they were in. The Kodak community was certain it was in film business. And they knew how to make films. But in the end, film was only the medium. The real business was that they were good at making images. And some of the earliest research and development of digital photography occurred at Kodak. Had they understood itself as being in the image business, perhaps their story of clouds might be different. But the new medium was not embraced because they thought they were in a film business. And so the corporate executives looked to what they knew, the board, or what you might consider the leadership of Kodak was doing something that they thought they were capable of doing and what they were only seeing. And what happened to them? The rest became history. Does the church know what it is in for? Do we know what our calling is? Ask the documentary. Do we know our reason for being? Do we know our deepest purposes in life? The world around us is changing, friends. Do we know our deepest calling? And so the writers of today's text ask us to remember that the Pentecost spirit has blown us out into the world. It has sent us out there a thousand years ago, and in a paradoxical way, the spirit is sending us there again today. And if we are to sort out what we need to learn from this experience, we will do well to be mindful of the parable of the Kodak and the parable of these two churches to ask the very question, what really is our deepest purposes as a church and as Christians? What are we for? There is the late George Consell, who was the 11th Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of New Jersey. And so in his sermon, he writes this. Some years ago, one of our daughters took a serious interest in music and set out to become a professional. As I sat with her one day before, an important audition, I handed her a card that read, let them know you love it. Judge knew that competence and proficiency and even beauty will not be enough. He said to his daughter, let them know you love it. And in his sermon, he continues by saying, our goal as Christians is to live that the world may know that we love life. For the love of God who gives us this wondrous gift, the grace to enjoy it, and a passion to share it for the sake of Jesus Christ. And I ask you the same question, what are you living this life for? What is your purpose? He says, to love, to share the gift of life for the sake of Jesus. And I think this perhaps might be our purpose. This perhaps might be our reason. For this Jesus says, of the spirit, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. For this, the Holy Spirit anointed the head and warmed the heart of the apostle on the first day of Pentecost. For this, the spirit also gave them courage so that they can go out and proclaim the love of God to the world. And for this, the spirit equipped them to cherish the old and embrace the new. The apostle friends, will transform that Pentecost day from being anxious to being confident. They were transformed from people who were traumatized to people who were energized. People who were dispirited to people 
who were spirited. So friends, the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples gathered at the at first Pentecost. And there was this outburst of divine creative energy. And their hearts were on fire. Their hearts was on fire for them to go out and make a change in the world. The Holy Spirit is the life of God. The Holy Spirit, friends, creates. It puts, puts things as they should be. It gives us direction. It sends the world in the right place. What is it that we need to do on this day of Pentecost? Pentecost is a day in which we celebrate the birthday and the creation of what we now call church. As for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit on Pentecost is calling us to look forward. The Holy Spirit is calling us to change eternally. The Holy Spirit is calling us to go out so that we can be the change that our world so desperately need. For the disciples, they were in total fear indoors. And yet God says to them, I will build a future for you. I do this as I pour out my life upon for you. I choose to receive you. And I want you to depend on me. And God says to the church, here is the power. Go to the world. Build my kingdom of love, peace, joy, justice, and righteousness. God says to us on Pentecost, here is the power. Use it so that people will see my will here on earth. And so I encourage you this morning, now is the time for us to look forward and cast ourselves into the hands of God so that when we pray, Holy Spirit, come on a day like Pentecost, we do it in dependence. Not dependence on ourselves, but dependence on God through Christ. We do it so that it's not a trick. We do it so that it is not an idol. We do it because we are not hoping for wealth. We do it because we don't want power or prestige. We do it in a simply raw way. We do it in an undiluted God way. We do it so that we pour ourselves out sacrificially for the people around us as shown in God's love for us. So that we can show love to each other, even for our opponents and our enemies. Peter's message on Pentecost was a call for each and every one of us, the call to repent, the call to literally turn around from all the things that we do that does not hold true for what God is calling us to be. A call to change direction from the things that we do that do not please God. And so now is that time to turn from anything other than the dependence on God. Now is that time to seek God. Now is that time to receive the very life of God. And I think that is our purpose. This is a purpose which has cost Jesus everything. Jesus gives his life for us. So that in response, we might be willing to share that life with the people around us. Jesus died on the cross so that we can have that grace and go out in the world and let people experience that grace that Jesus has given us on the cross. And I think that is the reason for Pentecost. What is it that we need to change as Christians so that we can be the people that God has called us, especially in an ever-changing world? What do we need to do so that we can set our hearts on fire and go out in the world and speak and proclaim that love of Christ just as it happened on the day of Pentecost? Maybe perhaps we need to look inwardly and repent. Or maybe perhaps we need to look beyond the familiar. Or maybe perhaps we need to spend time to meditate on all the things that we think are tradition. Maybe perhaps sometimes traditions do not hold true. Maybe perhaps we need to look into the time and the season we're in. And that is what I think could be and should be the essence of Pentecost. And as we think about this week, a Holy Spirit day like this, let us think about ways in which we can go out like the disciples. They were indoor terrified. They were indoor traumatized, paralyzed. But when the Holy Spirit descended on them, they had that courage to go out. They had that courage to proclaim. And in their message of proclamation, even though they spoke in different tongues, nobody understood what was happening. 
they were excited to spread the love of Christ. And so I beg you and I ask you this morning, when you go out today, you think about Pentecost, remember to share that love of Christ. People might not understand the language you speak. People might not understand the way you spread that love. But just like the people in the Pentecost, let that love speak for itself. Let that love be shown to people regardless of what they think of you and regardless of what you think of them. Happy Pentecost. And Pentecost blessing to all of you this morning. Amen. presentation of tithes and offering. I invite you to stand and join me as we sing together. Heavenly Father, as we gather on this Pentecost Sunday, we are reminded of the transformation power of your spirit, breathing life into dry bones and igniting the hearts of your people. Just as you have enlivened the early church with the wind and fire of your presence, empower us to prophesy life into the brokenness of our world. May our offering today be a testament to our faith in your promise of renewal and restoration. Restore us, O oh God, and continue to guide us to be that change that our world is so desperately need. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. It's now time for our closing hymn this morning. It's found on your Methodist hymnal, page 528. Nearer, my God, to thee. Please turn and join me as we sing together this morning.
we've heard the message this morning. The disciples were gathered in this indoor place, were very scared of what is to come when Jesus had ascended into heaven. And Jesus had promised them the Holy Spirit, said he was going to send them a helper. And on Pentecost, what happened is they now have this helper. And they had this unprecedented courage to begin to speak in different language. When they spoke in different language, people misunderstood what was going on. Some people thought perhaps they were drunk. But no, they were not drunk. It was the Holy Spirit that filled them. And on a Pentecost day like this, each of us get to experience the Holy Spirit. And we do that in our own way. And we get that courage to go out in the world and speak in different languages. Speaking in different language doesn't have to be words. It could be action. Languages, there are sign languages. The action can mean a lot to a lot of people. And so I encourage you this morning as you go out, for your, to, uh, go out during the week, find your own story of Pentecost. Speak that language. Whether it's a language of love, whether it's a language of kindness, whether it's a language of trying to help the people who need your help. Because God says to us that we are called to be Pentecost people every day. Pentecost is not a one-day event. It is an everyday event. And so as you go out this week, be reminded that you are people of Pentecost. And may the Spirit of God live through you and guide you. And you know that you are loved. And so love everybody around you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for a beautiful service. And we thank you for a Pentecost movement like today. We ask that as we go out into the world, remind us to be spirit-filled people. Remind us to love. Remind us to care for each other. Remind us to be the change that our walls are desperately need. Remind us to be a life of proclamation like your students, like your disciples. May your peace that brought us here go with us. May your love that continues to embody the love, may your love that continues to guide us, and may your love that continues to help us, may that love follow us every step of the way. We ask this in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We were not taking our uh, English uh, speaking service members, but we were taking our